But I just knew what's in the Sunday school book this morning, praise God. Our scripture will be coming from Matthew 21 and 1. And when they drew nigh to Jerusalem and was come to Bethlehem unto the Mount of Olives, then said Jesus to disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say all unto you, ye shall say, The Lord has need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the son, the daughters of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a coat, the foal of an ass. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, as we bow our heads now for prayer, Let's all stay. I promise you I won't be long. Lord God, this morning, Heavenly Father, we come to you saying thank you. Lord God, we thank you for this day, Lord, this beautiful day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that we can feel this chill in the air, Lord God. Let us know, Heavenly Father, that you are still God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we thank you for waking us up last night, Lord God, because we know you didn't have to do it. Lord God, we thank you for watching over the sick and the shut in and for blessing the bereaved family, Lord God. Touch them, Heavenly Father. Let them know, Lord God, that you're still in control, that you have them, Lord, that we be made in there for a night, but Lord God, joy coming in the morning. Lord God, we thank you for all your angels for sending them to protect us, Lord God. Lord God, we just, Lord, we just say thank you. Sometimes, Lord, if nothing else can be said, but thank you, Lord. Lord, if nothing else that we can ask for, Lord God, that you have not already supplied. You said if the birds of the air don't worry, what were they going to eat? Why shall we, Lord God? Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that you said you would never leave us nor forsake. Yeah. Yeah. 
Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, listen, we would like to say thank you for choosing Evergreen as a place of worship on this morning. And we thank God for those of you uh, who are worshiping with us uh, on this morning. A couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, Sister Shannon uh, would like to meet with all of those who are uh, on the planning committee for the Easter fun day, uh, immediately following service. So if you would, uh, just take a moment and uh, meet in the uh, kitchen area uh, with her following service so that we can uh, finalize uh, everything for, uh, for our Easter weekend. Amen? Amen. Amen. Like I said on last week now, uh, they are working extremely hard to uh, put this event together, and we want to make sure that uh, y'all ain't talking about bringing me a plate, amen? Amen. 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 Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I want to see you Saturday and Sunday. Amen. Amen. Don't get on the phone uh, Saturday night talking about how was it? <laughs> Come, you will see. Amen. Amen. A lot of children in the area. Uh, we want to make sure that we bring our, all of our children, invite their friends. Uh, we're going to have plenty of eggs and jumpers and all types of games. And so let's make sure that we take advantage of our own activities. Amen. Amen. I hear it every green. So uh, also, listen, um, we have some uh, visitors uh, here with us on this morning. And uh, thank God that um, that you have chosen to join with us. Uh, Sister Clara uh, will be doing some follow-up with you all uh, to make sure that you uh, you know how grateful we are to have you here uh, with us at Evergreen Christian Community Church on this morning. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, also, uh, also, we want to, uh, to, to make sure... Uh, that we keep our sick and shut in in our prayers uh, and our bereaved uh, in our prayers and make sure uh, that we are praying church. Amen. Amen. Uh, make sure that we are uh, definitely a praying church. Amen. If that being all, get your tithes, your offering, your seed in your hand. Amen. As we get ready to give unto the Lord. Your tithes and your offering in your hand as we make ready to give unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. We would also like to thank uh, Sister Applewhite, amen, and her husband for our Easter decor. Amen. 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 Give them a hand. Also, also to those who helped with the uh, with the kitchen renovation. Amen. Amen. We have some good brothers and sisters. Amen. We chipped in on, on that. Amen. So when you get time. Uh, peek around the back, the cabinets uh, look a little better, the countertop look a little better, sink look a little better, got a new stove, a new fridge, amen, ain't God all right? Amen, and that's just the beginning uh, of what God is doing, uh, going to do uh, through us here at Evergreen Christian Community Church. Amen, so if you would, if you have your offering in your hands, stand to your feet, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. And hold that gift in the air. Say, Lord, I'm grateful for my time and for my offering. I give it unto you knowing that when I give it, you'll give it back to me. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Run it over. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You would follow our
is out of here. Father, we just thank you for blessing us to come together and lift up your holy name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. May your church be lifted up in the way that you have it to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all know God is great. Amen. Amen. Uh, say amen for our guest guitarist this morning. Amen. 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 Amen.
grab your Bibles here. And go to Luke 23. He made a way. He made a way. Luke 23 and 33. sentence of condemnation. We are suffering justly because we are getting what we deserve for what we have done. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, I assure you, most solemnly say to you that today you will be with me in paradise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want you to go back up and look at the portion of the red scripture where Jesus said unto them, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. As we continue this morning, my brothers and sisters, in this series entitled The Road to the Resurrection, I want to talk to you this morning, preach and teach to you this morning, from the subject entitled, Excuse My Slaying in My Topic, <laughs> but I want to talk to you this morning from the subject entitled, I Ain't Mad At You. Amen. If you would, just look at somebody this morning and tell them, say, neighbor, neighbor. whatever it is, amen. I ain't mad at you. Amen. 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 Y'all would just allow me to go to the Urban Dictionary. Step outside of Webster and talk Negro songs. 
tell you this morning that we ought to be grateful that Jesus declared on Calvary. I ain't mad at you. My brothers and my sisters, I would like to take a walk down this road to the resurrection of a man's life and death who was centered solely around people who really did not deserve it. I'm not talking about the people up the street. I'm not talking about the people who were in the club last night. I'm not talking about the people who are not at church this morning. I'm talking to you who are under the sound of my voice and I'm here to inform you that despite how holy you think you are and how self-righteous you have become in your own mind, the truth of the matter is, is that none of us deserve what the Lord did for us. None of us are deserving of his overlooking of the foolish acts of mankind that caused him to end up on a hill called Calvary hanging from a tree. But my brothers and sisters, I'm so glad that as Jesus took this road to resurrection to the resurrection he stopped by a place called Calvary and told the Lord his God his father he told the Lord before God could even tell us he said father forgive them for they know not what they are doing and if you will look deeply into the wording of Jesus, not only was he saying, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. But if you will look more in depthly into the wording, Jesus was saying, not only do they know not what they're doing, but he was saying they don't know who they're doing it to. Oh, my brothers and sisters, that is the power of the statement that Jesus was making here because really and truly they were well aware that they were killing an innocent man. The truth of the matter is that they were well aware that their foolishness had gotten the best of their intellect and they had taken, yes, their uh, pride to another level. But Jesus said to the Lord God Almighty, he said, Lord, forgive them because I ain't really mad at them. And the reason why he, 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 he can make this statement with so much clarity and so much conviction is because he knew that from the beginning of time in the garden where Adam fell subject to the serpent that was under the influence of Satan himself, Jesus knew that one day he would be the one to redeem us from the hand of the enemy. And so as Jesus understood his assignment, his assignment, he was able to reach past his temporary temper and look down into the destiny that God had given him and tell the Lord God, if you would, God, don't give them. Because I ain't really mad at them. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice on this morning that can attest and relate to Jesus that you have been at a point in life where somebody had did you wrong? And you did not do anything to them when somebody had crossed you and you tried to cross the street to get away from them. When somebody had said bad things about you and you had only spoken positive things about them. And you had to do just like Jesus and say, Lord, forgive them. Because I ain't really mad at them. Can we take a walk down this road of the resurrection and will you follow me through the life of Jesus? And can I point out a few places in the life of Jesus where he had to show them that I ain't mad at you? Here we go, my brothers and sisters. Point number one. Jesus proved, brother dear, that he was not mad at them, even at the place where Pilate anticipated the envy of 
the chief priest and the elders. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, when you're on this road of life, you have got to tell the Lord, I ain't mad at these folk, even though jealousy and envy have taken over them. Y'all might as well say amen in here on this morning. If you will look, look, look when you get time in the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 17 through verse 20. Watch this. The Bible said that, that, that and so they assembled for the purpose. And Pilate said to them, so Shantae, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to set free? They said, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ, for Pilate knew. <laughs> Somebody shout jealousy and envy. For Pilate knew that it was because of jealousy and envy that the chief priests and the elders had handed Jesus over to him. And while he was seated on the judgment seat, his wife, sometimes you got to thank God for your wife because they can see farther than you can see. The Bible said he thanked God. He should thank God for his wife because his wife sent him a message saying, have nothing to do with that righteous and innocent man. Yeah. For last night, I suffered a great dream, and I suffered greatly because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to put Jesus to death. And it was all because they thought that they would lose their seat in the church rather than seeing that Jesus had a whole new seat for them in the kingdom. Hal Kaufman wrote one time, and I quote, Hal Kaufman said that envy is counting other people's blessings instead of counting your own. Can I say that again? My brothers and sisters, Hal Kaufman, he wrote from the depths of his spirit and said that envy is counting other people's blessings instead of counting your own. My brothers and sisters, had the priests and the elders been counting the blessings that they had of encountering Jesus instead of being intimidated by Jesus in the presence, they would have understood that they were in the midst of the Messiah that was going to save mankind. Yeah. Look at your neighbor this morning and tell them, neighbor, neighbor. it's dangerous, dangerous to be envious. A lot of people take the word envy and jealousy and they group them together. But can I tell you something, my brothers and sisters, there was a fine line between jealousy and envy. A jealous person is a person that won't hide how they feel. In other words, jealousy is easily tracked, it's easily traced. You can trace it through their actions, you can trace it through their facial expressions. But envy is a sin that lies at the very marrow of the bones of mankind. In other words, envy can be hidden with a smile. be hidden with a handshake. Envy can be hidden by sitting down at the table like Judas did. Envy can be hidden by coming to church together. Envy can be hidden at the family reunion. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing in here. And the same folk that's sitting smiling with you, sitting eating with you, are looking at you crazy because God bless you with a card note.
over. But see, sometimes we are so envious and we are so heart-stricken to where we hide and we mask our envy. The, 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 the most dangerous person or one of the most dangerous people in the world is a person who has been overtaken by envy. Yeah. 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 Again, that person will connive, they will cheat. Yeah. They were undermined. Yeah. This is what the elders and the chief priests did. They were moving throughout the crowd. Yeah. Saying, kill Jesus. Yeah. 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 They were moving and had maneuver. They had meetings prior to the meeting. Yeah. I ain't talking to the church folk this morning. I'm, I'm talking to the saved folk. They, they had meeting, a meeting prior to the meeting. And said, when we get here, we going to kill Jesus. But what I love, what I love, what I love about the text, my brothers and sisters, is that Jesus at the end of the envy was still able to say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In other words, he said, Father, I ain't even mad at him. And my brothers and sisters, when you deal with a person that's filled with envy, sometimes you got to look up to the Lord and say, Lord, you know what? If you would, just help me keep paying this note. Yeah. Yeah. Right. As I forget these Negroes. Because yeah. <laughs> truth be told, I ain't even mad at them. To touch somebody, tell them, I ain't mad at them. Go ahead on with your envy, with your jealousy. I ain't mad at you. That's your daughter to fight me and God. I'm going to keep on having this business. <laughs> Number two, and I got to move on. I got to move on. The Bible said that not, not only what, what was Jesus not mad at them because of the envy, but if, if, if you would go to St. John chapter 19, verse 23 and 24, the Bible says that then the soldiers... When they had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam woven from top and throughout. Then they said, therefore, amongst themselves, let us start a dice game. Mm. All right. mm. I mean, let us cast lots. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> he said, let us cast lots. And rent it, but cast lots for who shall it be? And the scripture that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said that they parted my raiment among them, and my vesture they did cast lots. And these things, therefore, the soldiers did. Point number two, I want to tell you is that Jesus said, "I ain't mad at you, even if you play games with my garments." He said, I ain't mad at you, even if you play games with my garments. Now, if you look here, there is a point, there is a point that, that's found actually in Luke 23, 9 through 12. Watch this now. Watch, 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 watch this now. Recurse. The Bible says in Luke in Luke chapter 23, verse 9 through 12, the, the, the Bible said, and he, this being Herod, he asked Jesus a question after the question, but Jesus refused to answer them. And meanwhile, leading the priests and the teachers of the religious law, they stood there shouting. Here go these church folk hollering in the background, acting a fool. Well. Yeah. He wrong. He wrong. Well, what were you last night? <laughs> he wrong. He wrong. Why you ain't raising your children? He wrong, he wrong where your husband and your wife is. He wrong, he wrong what you doing with the church's money. He wrong, he wrong what you doing on your job. He wrong, he wrong. What were you on the phone texting, talking, and Facebooking about last night? What, what that you said on Twitter this morning? He wrong. Everybody looking at everybody's problems, but ain't looking at their own. But watch how God works things out. The Bible said, and then Herod and his soldiers begin mocking and ridiculing Jesus. Finally, they put a robe on him, a royal robe, and sent him back to Pilate. But watch why Jesus was not mad at Herod nor Pilate for their foolish actions. 
Because the end of this verse said that they sent him back to Pilate. And Herod and Pilate, who had been enemies before, then became friends. Wow. Hold on, let me watch this right here. Watch this right here. Even though Herod was making a mockery of Jesus by putting a robe on him, God said that even in the midst of y'all anger, I'll make y'all become friends again. Isn't it crazy that the Lord would take the same people who tried to bring confusion and bring resolve? Yeah. 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 Herod and Pilate were enemies. But because they both met Jesus, they had to become free. Yeah. Ain't God good this morning that sometimes people will gang up on you and people will gamble about your future and say that you're not this and you're not that, but God will take the same enemies and put them together and become friends and sooner or later they'll have a pilot moment where pilot can see that this ain't a normal man, it's actually Jesus Christ. Pilate ought to thank God for sending Jesus to Herod and having Herod send Jesus to him. Because if Jesus had never met Herod, Jesus wouldn't have never met Pilate, and Pilate and Herod wouldn't have never became friends. Jesus wouldn't have ever made it to Calvary had it not been for a man that tried to make a mockery out of his crown. The Bible said that this way in Romans 8, all things work together. For the good. Yes. Of them that love the Lord and for those who are the call according to the purpose. And so my brothers and sisters, what you have to understand is that sometimes even though people are making a mockery of you, you've got to thank God anyhow. Yes. Because the mockery might be a part of the mission. You ought to tell yourself this morning and say, I thank God for them mocking me. The Bible says they took his clothes. They put a robe on and made fun of him. But lastly, what they didn't understand is that Jesus is royalty. Was not limited to a robe. Because had it royalty be limited to a robe, then he would not have been born in a manger. Jesus didn't need a, a throne to be Christ. Jesus didn't need a chariot to be Christ. Jesus didn't need an entourage to be Christ. Jesus didn't need a paparazzi to be Christ. The fact that he was born in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes, lived, saved, healed, set free, and delivered, and then said, I ain't mad at you, was enough to make him cry. Jesus said, I'm not worried about the robe. You can gamble over the robe. I'm not worried about the mockery. You can gamble over me. But what you got to understand and what you soon will see is that I am not my clothes. And there is still a Christ that's greater in me. Yeah. Take this necktie off of me. Yeah. And there is a Christ that still lives on the inside. Take that church dress off of you. Yeah. And you will still be a child of God. Yeah. Take that suit off of you in the pews. And you will still be a child of God. I need you to look at your yeah. neighbor. Tell them, say, neighbor, yeah. I am not my clothes. Why Jesus could be so subtle in his saying because Jesus understood that I'm not my clothes. I got to move on. Point number three this morning. Not only could he say I ain't mad at you because you played games with my garments. Not only am I not mad at you because you were envious of me. Watch this. Jesus said number three that I ain't mad at you for trying to antagonate my anointing. Or antagonize yeah. my anointing. Jesus looked at them 
and said, I ain't mad at you, even though you're about to try to antagonize my anointing. If you look at the word antagonize or the word antagonate, watch this. It means, according to Webster, to make someone troubled and nervous. Antagonation uh, is an unpleasant state of extreme arrival, arousal, and to antagonate a person makes them feel stirred up and excited and tense and confused, and the end result of being antagonized is that one will quit. And so, my brothers and sisters, these people were about to unleash a campaign of antagonizing acts to try to make the Lord quit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But I need somebody to say this morning, I will, I will. Not, not quit. quit. I need you to say that again because, because the, the enemy is going to try to antagonize you across this week. The enemy is going to try to antagonize you across this week. But I need you to look at your neighbor this morning and tell him, say, neighbor, neighbor. I, will I will not quit. I need you to stir your spirit right there here on this morning and lay your hand on yourself. Lay your hand on yourself. Take your right hand, matter of fact, and put it over your heart this morning and tell yourself, say, self, I will not quit. It was. It was. It was. It was the ultimate goal of the enemy to make Jesus quit. The Bible says in Luke chapter 23 verse 35 that now the people stood by watching and even the rulers sneered at him saying that he saved others. Let him come down. And save himself. Sometimes the enemy will play with your mind when you find yourself at a hard part in life. Yeah. Is there anybody other than Carl Bickham Jr. that's ever been in a hard spot in life? And the enemy unleash a campaign of you can't. Anybody ever been at a rough place in life where things are not going your way and the enemy is whispering in your ear over and over, you need to quit. This is what happened to Jesus while he was on Mount Calvary. The Bible said that they were saying to him, if you be the Christ. <sighs> if was a doubt, if was a contingency, if was a word that they were saying needed to be proven to them, but Jesus didn't live to prove anything to them. Jesus lived to prove everything to him. Yeah. Can I tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, that the only way that you are going to overcome antagonation is if you learn how to live under the will of God. The people attempted to raise Jesus' anxiety. They attempted to make him attempt to prove them wrong and prove to them that he was anointed by saying if you know the Lord and if you love the Lord and if you are the Messiah, come down from this cross and save yourself. They antagonized him when they planted some thorns and made him a mock crown, placed the crown of thorns on his head. They were trying to antagonize him. They were trying to antagonize him when they nailed the nails, the, 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 the nails, they nailed in his hands, the nails, they nailed in his feet. They were trying to antagonize him. When they twisted his spine, they were trying to antagonize him. 
antagonize him. When they ripped him up with the whip of nine cat and nine tails, whipped him all night long and made mockery of him and spit on him and told him that he was not the Messiah, they were trying to antagonize him. Can I tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, when the enemy is whispering in your ear, he's trying to antagonize you. When the enemy is trying to tell you that the God that you know is a deliverer cannot deliver you from this, he is trying to antagonize you. But can I tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, I don't know if there's anybody other than Pickham Jr. in here on this morning, but is there anybody in here that has a made up mind that it does not matter how much the enemy antagonizes me, it does not matter how he tries to make me quit, I need you to repeat this after me with all of the influence and with all of the conviction that you have from God. Somebody lift your voice this morning and say, I will not quit. Oh God, I feel that right there. Yes, Lord. So somebody say that again because by this evening, the enemy is going to be in your ear. Somebody shout, I will not quit. Somebody needs to remind themselves that the Lord has been too good for them to give up. I need you to make this a corporate declaration. I need you to slide over by your neighbor and grab your neighbor by the hand this morning and tell them, say, neighbor, we will not. quit. He may try to make you quit. There may be some people that try to make you quit. Try to make you throw in the towel. But I need you to recite that one last time with me. And I'm going home. Somebody lay your hand on yourself and say, I will not We start about getting up Thursday. We're about to throw in the towel. Friday, your best friend spread into business yesterday. The enemy got in your children. But I need you to preach with me. Come this morning, this morning, this morning. I, somebody say, I. Going to hell. 
And so, can I tell you something that's going to help get somebody delivered here in this morning? If you're in Evergreen this morning and you're mad at somebody, that God is about to deliver it here if you if you're receive it. If you're angry with somebody or if you got a grudge against somebody because they wronged you or because you just don't like them. Or if you're angry or mad with a co-worker because you feel like they messed up and y'all didn't hit the deadline. Or, or if you're angry with a family member. Mm. Uh, yes, God, I feel deliverance in here. Mm. Can, can I remind you that if Jesus can say, yes, yes. I ain't mad at you, mm. yes, then what are you doing? Mm. Yeah. If he hung out on camera, and, and y'all know that ain't how the story ended, I, I'll finish it next week. But, but, if, but, if, but if he hung out on camera, the Bible said he was thirsty. And these rotten to the core soldiers, instead of giving him water, handed him sour wine.
Yes, God, I, I feel this strongly. If you're here, you say, Pastor Ben, I, I need a church home. I need a place where I can go and be fed the Word of God. I need a place where my children can go and be fed the Word of God. Can I tell you something? Evergreen is a mighty good place to grow in God. You don't have to wait to make the decision. You already know God has already had, He already has this on your heart. That's why He's letting you come forward. I'm just being obedient. But if you know without a shadow of a doubt that this is the place that God has called you to make your church home. I'm waiting and God is waiting and He's calling you. He's calling you right now. He's calling you. I don't pressure people, but God is calling you right now. You say, Pastor Bickham, I need a place for me and my kids to go and grow. Move and come here, come here, come here. There is room. Standing all over the building. We're finna go home, bro. I'm talking to you. At the cross. Standing all over the building. For you.